السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفاه سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه وبعد Brothers and Sisters Welcome to the ninth special edition of Ask Huda during the blessed month of Ramadan It's already nine days by the grace of Allah May Allah make it easy for all of us to utilize this opportunity the best way. Amen. Our phone numbers in the beginning for those who would like to give us a call uh, in order to answer their questions and inquiries. Beginning with area code 002-011-2500-8679. Alternatively, 002 area code 011-246-4583. Email addresses ask at huda.tv and Facebook page <coughs> is the R. Muhammad Salah official. Barakallahu feekum. And now with the, with the questions that I received on uh, my Facebook page, by the time you start ringing in, since we didn't have any pending question from the last episode, by the grace of Allah. Sister Aisha Sayyid says, What is the time for tahajjud? And is it important to have a sleep before praying tahajjud? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَهَجَّدَ بِهِ نَافِلَةً لَكَ عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَبْعَثَكَ رَبُّكَ مَقَامًا مَحْمُودًا Allah the Almighty ordered the Prophet sallam, to pray at night and to recite the Qur'an in his tahajjud. And the word will be that Allah the Almighty will resurrect the Prophet sallam, and will raise him to the highest praiseworthy position the position of accepting the intercession of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and so on. The night prayer is called Tahajjud and it is called Qiyamul Layl and it is not necessary to sleep in order to get up to pray so that it will be called Tahajjud if you did not sleep at all and you pray the night prayer that is also Tahajjud. In Ramadan and due to the fact that the night is very short People actually pray taraweeh and if they grab something to eat or if they drink some tea, chat with the family, then it is already tahajjud time or the last uh, part of the night, the last one third of the night. Uh, <clears throat> then afterward is the suhoor and the adhan for fajr. So one does not really have to sleep in order for his night prayer to be considered tahajjud. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Hamdi from Somalia. Please try again. The following question is from Yaqub Musa Arsenal. Yaqub says, What is the difference between at Tawheed and Al Iman? Uh, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam answered the question about Iman in the hadith of Jibreel, peace be upon him, when he said, Oh Muhammad, what is Iman? He said, Al-Iman is to believe in Allah. Believe in Allah entails the definition of Tawheed. Belief in Allah means to believe in His oneness, to believe in His Lordship, to believe that He is the only one who is worthy of worship, to believe that the unity of names and attributes are only for Allah the Almighty, that He has the best names and attributes and no one is ever comparable to Him. That is called Tawheed. So Al-Iman is to believe in Allah, to believe in His angels, in His books, in His messengers, and in the last day, and then in the sixth article of faith, which is the divine ordainment, the divine destiny. It's good and it's bad. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said in his answer to Jibreel, peace be upon him. So the first article of Iman is belief in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which we call it Tawheedullahi bil'ubudiyya meaning 
to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, which entails according to the layer classification of the different uh, types or categories of Tawheed, that you believe that the creation was created by only one creator. That's called the unity of lordship. There is only one Lord, one creator. And then the second is the unity of worship. If this is the case, then no one other than him should be worshipped. And the third is the unity of his names and attributes. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Gibran from United Arab Emirates. Hello. Assalamu alaikum, Gibran. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I have uh, four questions for you. Yeah. Uh, first is that I live in Dubai. Well, it's about Zakat al Fitr. Mm -hmm. And I live in Dubai, and yeah, it is uh, difficult to find poor people to give uh, the Zakat al Fitr. On the other hand, in my home country, in India, we have many poor and uh, needy people who visit our homes seeking such a zakat. In such situation, can we arrange to give the zakat al fitr to our needy Muslim brother and sisters uh, in uh, India? If yes, then how do we calculate the zakat al fitr? Should it be just uh, just by weight as permitted about 2.5 kg of grains per person bought locally in India or should be arranged by value of 2.5 kilo of grains in Dubai and buy as much grains fit in that amount of money in uh, India, which will definitely exceed uh, 2.5 kilo in weight. Okay. And uh, the second question is, I was uh, praying, uh, like uh, after the I was praying in the um, Sunnah, and uh, I was making dua before Taslim, and this uh, beautiful ayah crossed my mind about uh, Musa alayhi salam in uh, Surah Taha, قال ربي إس إشرى لصدري ويسر لأمري وأهل الأقطاع من لساني يقه قولي. and uh, while making dua, uh, it came from my mouth that Allah oh, is my task as you is for uh, Musa عليه السلام and uh, on on uh, about all your prophets how you is the task for them is uh, the task for me. so after that I went to the um, Imam of the Masjid and I asked him that I said so and so it came out of my mouth, should I, well, what should I do? He said that you shouldn't compare yourself uh, to the Prophet and you did something wrong. So I just want the advice on this. And uh, my third question is uh, if during the Dohar uh, Salah or uh, the Asar, which is prayed quietly, and if the Imam forgets to say the Ayah or then he gets stuck in some of the Ayah, what should he do? If he skips, and, uh, uh, brother uh, Jubran, if he skips yeah. what? Sorry? If, if the Imam skips what in the prayer? No, no, not skips. Like if he is praying, suppose, uh, the Surah after the Fatiha, and he gets stuck in one of the Ayah, like, like, you know? Okay, if the Imam errs or forgets an Ayah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how do Imam, what should he do, like? But you give a and very strange he, example. You said if he gets stuck in Surah Al-Fatiha, that's why. No, no, not in Fatiha. No, no, no. After that, of course. Okay. Yeah, and the second question is also about that. Like, if uh, suppose Imam makes a mistake and he sits in the third rakah of uh, Asr or Dhuhr, so the people praying behind him, what should they? How do they make uh, the Imam aware of it? Okay. By Thank saying you. What? I got your questions, Brother Jubran. There are more than four, though. With regards to zakat al-fitr, which our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mandated on every Muslim male or a female, young or old, healthy or sick, of the Muslims, free or slave, <coughs> as the hadith is narrated by Abdullah ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, sa'am min tamrin aw sa'am min sha'ir. As-sa'a, I think I brought before al-mud, uh, and I showed uh, how big is the mud. And uh, asa approximately, as you said, 2.5 kilogram of food, of dates, of raisin, of rice, of the average food that people normally need in their locality, wheat, barley, and so on. You say that you can't find any poor people in your locality. And uh, I entirely disagree with this suggestion because I know that there are many, many people who are very poor, and you know that and their salaries are very weak, but they do not necessarily live around you. So there are many poor people, and I believe 
we have to pay attention to them and give them the zakah because they are also supporting big families. And I hear of people who actually hire a big space, not just a room or they share a room. So yes, indeed, there are many poor people around you that you need to pay attention to them. The question now, is it permissible to give the zakah to uh, my family or ask my family to pay it uh, overseas? Well, if you don't have any poor people, uh, and if the people in your locality or your back home are more in need than the people in the place which you're living in, it is permissible. In case of crisis somewhere in a Muslim land where there is an urgent need to support them, in this case, it is permissible to transfer the zakah, whether zakat al-fitri or zakat al-mal. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Abdu from Somalia. Yeah, yeah, it's Abdi from Somalia. I no. have a question for you. No. I have a question for you. And my question is uh, how to pray. Uh, my question for you is how to pray. Uh, to hedge, to hedge, because you are talking about hedge, isn't it? No. Okay. Thank you. Do you have any other questions, Abdu? I have that question, please. If you could answer for me, I, I, I just want to thank you, Sheikh. You're most welcome. Abdu, you can pray tahajjud simply by praying at any time after you finish your Isha prayer. You pray between this time all the way until Fajr Adhan. That's called the night prayer. By praying two by two, two rak'ahs, then you make tashahud and taslim. Two rak'ahs and you make tashahud and taslim. And that is the best format as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do. If mashallah you can recite long recitations, stay in ruku' for long, uh, enough and sujood, then it will be best if you can just pray total 11 rak'ahs. Two by two, uh, that is 10 rak'ahs, and the third by itself, one rak'ah, which, or you may pray eight rak'ahs, two by two, and three rak'ahs all together with one tashahud and taslim by the end. Barakallahu feek. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brother Muhammad from United Arab Emirates. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brother Muhammad. How are you? Alhamdulillah. I have a question about zakat. Nah. Uh, for, example, for example, last year in Ramadan, we had 100,000 mm -hmm. Now, Mashallah. this Ramadan, we don't have same saving because we used half of the money to do some business. Nah like uh, property business, buy house and selling house. Okay. So do we need to pay zakat on this one? Okay, Barakallah Fiqh. Muhammad, you only pay zakat on whatever you possessed actually at the time of paying the zakat. So you had 400,000 dirham last Ramadan, Alhamdulillah. This Ramadan, they became 800,000. You pay on the 800,000. Well, this Ramadan, actually, you bought some goods with 200,000 and you only have liquid cash, 200,000. You pay for the 400,000. Why? Because the goods that you bought are for resale, for investment, like the stocks in the stock market, like shares, like a property that you purchased only to sell. That's your business, that's trade. But if the 200,000 that you purchased, a car for yourself, a flat for yourself, for your family member, for your kids, that's not zakatable. Barakallah feek. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Mubarak from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, why everybody sounds like you guys are fasting? Raise your voice a little bit, please. Could it be our speakers? Ma'am. Yesterday, I talked to you about... Uh, Mubarak, I can hear you. Raise your volume, please. Okay, okay. I said yesterday, I talked to you about uh, having doubts in prayer. No, no. And you gave, uh, you gave an example of uh, was, was, uh, and having compulsive disorder. Okay. Hello? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. So... so um. As you were explaining yesterday, uh, so normally I have doubts regarding uh, my act of worship, ranging from uh, 
doing instant jazz or doing uh, my ablution or if I want to do anything that has to do with prayer. Sometimes it do involve things that doesn't have to do with prayer. Maybe some things that I do in my day-to-day activities, I have doubts in them. So what my question is, since I normally have this doubt in my prayer, from starting from Tegbira to Ihram, sometimes in fact I'll be having doubts that I've made a mistake or not. Uh, and as I explained to you yesterday in Uruku or in Sujud, not necessarily when I prolong my sujood that I will have doubt, but so most times it happens to me almost in every record of every prayer that I offered. So am I suppo- after the am I going to um, forget the the doubt? Should I neglect the doubt or am I going to do sujood uh, sujood the at every end of every prayer? That's the question. Okay, Barakallah Fiqh, brother uh, Mubarak. Allow me to comment on his uh, question, which I, was ans- uh, which I answered yesterday in details. And I explained the difference between the waswasa in the worship and uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. And I said you can tell based on the explanation I provided yesterday. Now, if you are constantly having those doubts, do you have to pray surudu uh, sahu? after every prayer, only when you experience the doubt. And remember, I also explained, when you know for sure, or when the confusion is concerning the number of rak'ahs, we said how to sort it out. Consider the lesser, okay? Whenever you are confused concerning the number of tawaf, you consider the lesser, similarly is a sa'i. But we also said that Nabi Wasallam told us how, how easily is it to handle those doubts. اِقْطَعِ الشَّكَّ بِالْيَقِينَ You finish your ruku and now you want to sujood. Satan came to you and whispered to you that you may not have said the adhkar ruku. Dismiss those whispers. Do not pay attention to it. Because you did say it. And it's only a matter of waswasa. Think about it this way. When one sister called a couple years ago, and she said that she is living in hell because her husband decided to divorce her because of this situation that she, basically the five prayers take like the whole day from her. By the time she finishes the wudu and whenever she's ready to pray, well, the whisper come to her and says, well, how do you know that you made wudu properly? Maybe you missed an arm. You missed washing your left foot. She goes back and while she's doing wudu, a whisper would come to her and say, how do you know that you cleaned up after answering the call of nature? So she starts the story from the beginning. How do you know that the toilet seat is not soiled with impurities? So she takes off her clothes, wash the toilet and the toilet seat, and then she takes a shower, and this whole process happening every time. Suggested so that, you know, that is really a medical condition. It's a disorder. It's not just some doubts from uh, Satan, because it is not only in the act of worship. It happens in many other things. People are very living in doubt. They have doubt whether they have doubt or not. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them shifa and may Allah protect all of us. If this is the case, pursue the treatment. Visit a psychiatrist and undergo the treatment. No problem, nothing wrong with that. If it is only occasional doubt that you may have in the salah, it's easy to handle. We, I, I suggested to a uh, viewer before to place a camera whenever you're ready to make wudu and w- record yourself on a camera while performing wudu. Record yourself while offering the prayer. And you know what she came back to me or he came back to me because I suggested to many people the same thing. That they are not missing anything. And ever since he put the camera, the thought the doubt and the whisper doesn't cross their mind anymore. Why? Because they know if they're in doubt, they will just rerun the video and they will watch. You can record it on your phone. Well, I didn't miss anything. Now we figure out it was nothing but the whispers of Satan. Such small cases like that were treated and were overcome by recording, you know, the, the act of worship. And this is how they figured out that, that Satan was playing games with them. But whenever it is uh, some disorder, I highly recommend that you 
visit a psychiatrist. Barakallahu feek. And there is nothing called that you pray to sajda to sahu or by the end of the prayer in case. You only offer the two prostrations for forgetfulness when you're sure that you forgot something or somebody reminds you or you were in doubt in the number of the prayers and you made up the difference. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Brother Ali from Nigeria. Ali, assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, how are you? I'm fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. MashaAllah, may Allah bless you and the entire technical crew. Ameen. Barakallah feekum. Thank you, Brother Ali. I, I have two questions, Sheikh. Now. My, my wife is a, is a sickle cell patient with a very complex halotizer. Mm. She, she, she has had six miscarriages. Hello? I hear you. May Allah give her shifa. May Allah hear her. I'm so I, 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 I want you to pray for her. I, and she is keen to have her own child. I don't know why I've been trying to talk her out of it. We even adopted a baby girl. Mm. But still, she, she so much wants to bear her own. I, I want you to pray for her. If it's going to be a blessing, then... Let her bear a child. I ask Allah the great, the Lord of the great throne to give her quick shifa and recover her. Ameen, Ya Rabb. And I hope the viewers join me in making the dua and say Ameen. Thank you, Brother Ali, for your keenness and for giving us this uh, uh, notice so that we can pray for your wife. Barakallah feekum. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Muhammad from Kenya. Muhammad, assalamu alaikum. Try again, Brother Muhammad. Okay. Jibran from United Arab Emirates with Zakatul Fitr. He said that, can I appraise, evaluate how much worth the 2.5 kilogram of whatever and send the cash? Well, Imam Abu Hanifa, may Allah have mercy on him, approves giving the value or whichever is beneficial to the poor. While the vast majority of the Jews are of the view that you should not give the value rather you should stick to what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam specified he said sa'a min tamrin aw sa'a min burrin aw sa'a min sha'ir you should stick to the uh, the the value you, you should stick to what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam suggested whether it is the type of food the dates the raisin the, the rice the wheat the barley and so on um, i found a solution to this problem. In our masajid, in our community, what we do is if somebody suggests to give the value in a state, he wants to give 10 bucks for instance, we say that's fine. Pay the 10 bucks to the masjid and the masjid will buy food and the masjid already is looking after, for instance, thousands of Syrian families. So it is not a problem. The masjid just gives them food. They are desperately in need for the food. This way, uh, it's a win-win situation. The person have paid his or her zakah properly, and it was given in food, and we practice the tradition of the Prophet ﷺ. Meanwhile, the poor and the needy were in desperate need for this kind uh, of food. Uh, a zakah is, as I said, zakatul fitri is different than zakatul mal. You don't have to be rich to give zakatul fitr. Rather, you could be extremely poor, you could be actually eligible to receive zakah, and you end up giving zakatul fitr. Not only that, you could be eligible to receive zakatul fitr, which is just some food, a bunch of food, uh, and you will end up giving zakatul fitr to somebody else. How? If you happen to have food at home, enough for yourself and your family members, or those who are living under your roof, under your guardianship, enough for a day and night, and you have anything extra to give, then you must give food for each family member. Sa'an, or 2.5 kilogram of the food as we mentioned earlier. What if you only have extra enough for three persons while you have family members, eight or nine? You give for the three family members whom you already have for them, and the rest, 
You're not obliged because you don't have. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. السلام عليكم. طيب. Brother Gibran said that in his prayer, after reciting Tashahud, and he gave detailed explanation. He said the Sunnah before Dhuhr. In the Sunnah or the Fard after reciting Tashahud, it is recommended to make Dua before making Taslim. It's a very, very special time to accept the Dua. As the Prophet ﷺ used to frequently invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there is a typical invocation that he used to recite on regular basis after reciting the Drood Sharif or at Tashahud and before making Taslim. So Brother Gibran thought of an ayah in which Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, invoked Allah when he was sent by Allah to the Pharaoh. He said, well, then Rabbi Shrahli Sadri, open and expand my chest for me. وَيَسِّرْلِي أَمْرِي and make my affairs easy وَحْلُ الْعُقْدَةً مِنْ لِسَانِي يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي and untie the knot of my tongue so that they can comprehend my statement since Moses peace be upon him had this problem earlier so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his dua so Jibran said oh Allah as you accepted the dua of Moses or as Moses invoked you and you accepted his dua also expand my heart for me my chest and make my affairs easy and and so on is this right or wrong that is very very right and whoever told you that that is not right you cannot compare yourself to a prophet that's baseless because basically we are ordered in the quran to follow the guidance of the prophets the invocations which were made by the prophets. Every invocation in the Quran made by the prophets, we invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by this invocation. Allah said to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa about all the messengers before him, Allah has guided them, so follow their guidance. And he said in Surah uh, Al-Ahzab, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ Why Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa has been our exemplar and the greatest role model to follow. So when you say, oh Allah, as a matter of fact, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy on him. Whenever he was given a mas'ala and it was hard and he was studying and he couldn't find an answer, he would place his face on the earth and would say, Ya Mu'allima Ibrahim Allimni. Ya Mufahima Sulaymana Fahimni. Oh Allah, the one who taught Abraham, teach me. Oh, the one who made Suleiman comprehend the issues, make me comprehend this mas'ala. So we follow their footsteps, their way of invoking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in many supplications, not only in this one. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Brother Mahmoud, sorry to keep you for a long time on the line. Mahmoud from the KSA, assalamu alaikum. Assalamu wa rahmatullah, Shaykh. Naam. I want to question Shaykh. Naam. Since we are in the month of Ramadan, and uh, we were told that uh, in Ramadan we are in a school. Now, uh, having to have some good, which uh, I, I didn't get them uh, in the right way, any halal place. They are not halal. After working in some, some years back, I come to realize that uh, they are haram things. So I want to dispose them. Uh, disposing them to my family members, is it uh, good or is it bad? Or what shall I do, inshallah? Yeah. Okay, Mahmoud, just to make sure that I rightly understood your question. You have some haram earning and you want to get rid of them. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. So, can you give them to family member? No, you cannot give them to family members or any beneficiary of your family, okay? Simply, yeah. you can give this haram earning to your family members. You can't, you cannot give this unlawful earning to your family members. Barakallah feek, Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Nadia from the KSA. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, Sheikh, I have three questions. Yeah. Uh, my question number one is, um, uh, two days before I went to one mosque uh, for uh, Tarawi and uh, this is the first time in that mosque I went, so the Imam already started uh, 
prayer and actually Isha prayer was over, finished. And when I reached the uh, um, mosque, it was the second rakah of uh, Tarawi. So when I started, I joined the um, Imam and I know that uh, many times I heard from you that it should be our first rakah. So I considered it my Isha prayer as a first rakah. But um, according to the Imam, when he was uh, going to Ruku or Sujood, I found that he is so fast. So uh, when uh, he finished his second rakah of uh, Tarawi, it was my first rakah of Isha prayer. But I was sure that if I complete three rakahs of my prayer, he, I will miss the two rakahs also. So uh, when he said Saram, I stood up with him, but I didn't make my three rakahs by my own. In his another Tarawi prayer, I considered it my second and third rakah. And after he finished uh, four rakahs of uh, Tarawi, uh, then I completed my last rakah. Is it okay or I should complete my other three by my own? Uh, did you get me or I have to repeat? I did perfectly get you. Okay. okay. Uh, now what you did was not right, Sister Nadia. MashaAllah, the first part, you were going very nice. MashaAllah. You joined the Imam in whichever prayer he was offering, Fard or Nafl, and that is your first rakah. It happened to be his second rakah of Taraweeh, and he made salam. That's it. You guys are disconnected. You are not related to each other in jama'ah anymore. Now you pray on your own the remaining three rakahs. So basically the three rakahs which you offered by yourself actually were singular, not in jama'ah, even if you intended so. And one should not intend to join while he's already in, uh, involved in another prayer, to join another jama'ah while he's already uh, being involved in another prayer. Barakallahu feekum. Thank you, Sister Nadia, and everybody will take a short break, and inshallah we'll be back in a few minutes. Stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and welcome back. We have Brother Gibran's third question, which, concern, which is concerning al fatwa ala al-Imam. In case the Imam forgets an ayah or gets stuck. And obviously that would only happen in the loud prayer, in Fajr, in Maghrib, in Isha, right? So if he gets stuck, that's why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recommended that the one who should pray behind the Imam, Ulunuha, Wal Ahlam, the grown up, wise, educated people, one who should succeed the Imam, should the Imam have to leave the prayer in case of any emergency, he is the first person to succeed the Imam. So somebody would do what we call it Fatah. You guys call it, we'll give him a Luqma, to give him a bite, to tell him the next ayah, and so on. That is permissible. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Sister Hamna from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Hamna. Wa alaikum, Sister Hamna. How are you? I'm fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. Barakallahu feeki. Go ahead. Sheikh, I have two questions. No. My first one is related to zakah. Uh, we know someone who she's earning, and uh, the earning is just for her, basically for her and her family. But uh, we still give them zakah. Is it permissible? But she's earning. Okay, Barakallahu Fiki. Thank you, Sister Hamna. Uh, Sister Fatima from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Hello, Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Go ahead, Sister Fatima, please. Um, I would like to ask you to ask with the best of this world and the hair of Shah. Barakallah feek, Zakallah khairan. Go ahead. Um, I have two questions. Nah. Um, the first one is, I bought gold jewelry that I intend to give at a wedding gift. You got gold what? And the person is in my gift. No, gold, just, gold. Gold bracelet? Jewelry. Jewelry, okay. Um, that I intend to give as a wedding gift. 
and the person isn't married yet. And the boy has spent a year with him, so she might get out as the car to eat the car on it. Okay. The car on jewelry. Okay. And then, second question. Yeah, on the gold. The second question is that allowed to say, Alhamdulillah, after you sneeze while playing? I, I didn't get the second question, Sister Fatima. Pardon me, please. Am I allowed to say Alhamdulillah after I sneeze while I'm praying? You're allowed to, oh, sneezing in the prayer. Yes, okay. Barakallah fiqh, Sister Fatima. Thank you. Barakallah fiqh. Okay. Um, uh, fourth and last question of Brother Gibran. If the Imam forgot and he sat for tashahud after the third rak'ah instead of the fourth, what should we do as followers? MashaAllah, you seem like, you know, you're always praying behind an Imam who forgets. But if it happens, we remind the Imam by saying, any dhikr, such as SubhanAllah. Kamal Inun, once we say SubhanAllah, the Imam will be reminded that he has forgotten one rak'ah or he has uh, sat for tashahud a little earlier or he skipped the tashahud. But if it is the third rak'ah and he sat for tashahud and you reminded him and he gets up, fine, you follow him. Then afterward, when he finishes the prayer, he should lead you into prostrations of forgetfulness. I recommend that they should be done before the taslim. So also, so those who join the Imam late and they don't know what is going on, they will get to pray the two prostrations of forgetfulness with the Imam. That's an easier case than if the Imam forgot and went for a, for a fifth rak'ah. Because if the Imam went for the fifth rak'ah, the followers would remind him. And they will be remain seated in tashahud. And they remind him by saying, subhanallah. If he doesn't comply, if he doesn't pay attention, or if he assumes that he is right, while everybody else is assuming that he is praying an extra rak'ah, for every person who believes that the imam has forgotten and he has gone for the fifth rak'ah, they are not allowed, they are not allowed to follow the imam in the fifth rak'ah. Rather, they should sit for tashahud. They can finish the prayer or wait until the Imam comes back and sits for his tashahud because this is an extra rak'ah. For the Imam, if he was certain that that is his fourth, his prayer is valid. Then after the prayer, we can discuss it and we can argue whether he prayed three or four or five. But in the prayer, every person of the followers who is so certain that the Imam has already prayed four and this is his fifth, is not allowed to follow the Imam in the extra rak'ah. That would invalidate his prayer. Okay. Uh, Sister Hamna asks about giving zakah to one who works, earns a salary, but barely enough for his family. Of course, it is permissible to give him zakah. Why do we misperceive and misunderstand the concept of al-faqir? There is faqir and there is miskin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Aisha from Nigeria. Sister Aisha. Yeah, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, as I was watching this channel last week. Okay. I heard about Prince Raka which one has to observe which one has to observe what uh, i didn't get the zaka raka 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 of what yeah yes 12 raka two in the morning four as uh, during zuhur uh, prayer two after two maghrib to Isha, but I'm not very clear with what your colleague has said. So I want to extensiate more on that ah, of Raka. Okay. Is it during Ramadan or is okay. all, all, all the time? Sister Aisha is asking about the Hadith, which also we answered yesterday, and inshallah I will answer after this call. 
Sister Zainab from USA. Sister Zainab. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mubarak to all of you. Barakallahu feeki. Same to you and to your family, Sister Zainab. Go ahead, please. Sheikh, I have a request. Is no. it past three months I was unable to watch Huda TV here in America, and I would keep trying so many sites, like the web streaming, and I was unable to contact the telephone lines and also. I was not able to get it. No, that's right. Uh, our live streaming was dropped because simply we failed to pay the bills. So pray for us. But uh, I believe now we're live on Galaxy yeah. 19. If you do have Galaxy 19, you can watch it for free, inshallah. Yeah, but Sheikh, I don't have a satellite connection. No. Hello, Sheikh. No. Yeah, I don't have the satellite cable TV, and that's why I always prefer watching on the laptop, on the internet, and it's so convenient, Alhamdulillah. May Allah reward the entire Sabah team. It gives so much knowledge. And for three months, I was living in darkness. It was like them. Right. Uh, I do believe, alhamdulillah, shukla, we have been working on it to settle our debt and fix the live streaming. I believe, inshallah, uh, it will be working very soon. If not already started working, I believe, today or yesterday. We have been working on it. Sister Zainab, do you have any questions currently? Uh, yeah, let's check one more thing. After Ramadan, inshallah, I'll be able to watch the live streaming too, right? Not only for the period of Ramadan. Inshallah, yes, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. Alhamdulillah wa shukrullah. Allah is the most generous. He's been providing for all of us. And sometimes when I think about how the channel has been running since nine years, I say that is only by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah wa shukrullah. Um, let's see the following question. Yeah, but before sister, sister Aisha's question concerning the 12 rakah, she said that uh, your colleague said yesterday it was me, it was not my twin colleague or twin sheikh. The 12 rakahs, uh, she said she's kind of confused. Uh, four rakahs before Zohr, two by two. Four before Zohr, two by two. Then two after Dhuhr, two after Maghrib. So we're not talking about before or after Asr. And two after Isha, and two before Fajr. Let's count again. Two rakahs before Fajr. We got two. Four before Dhuhr. Now we got six rakahs. Two after Dhuhr, eight rakahs. Two after Maghrib, ten rakahs. And two after Isha, twelve rakahs. Which the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, if you pray on regular basis in Ramadan or outside Ramadan, throughout your life, you pray the fard prayer along with the emphatic sunan, Allah will build a house for you in paradise. And believe me, I'm not upset that the question has been asked over and over and over. Actually, it pleases my heart that there are people there, out there, who are very keen not just to enter Al Jannah but to have Allah build a house for them in paradise. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَلَا إِنَّ سِلْعَةَ اللَّهِ غَالِيَةَ أَلَا إِنَّ سِلْعَةَ اللَّهِ الْجَنَّةِ The commodity of Allah indeed is expensive and valuable because it is al-jannah. And in another hadith he said it is very near to us. Nearer to any of us than his shoelace. What if you pray 12 rak'ahs every day before or after? How much time would it take? The prayer is not to benefit Allah. Wallahi is to benefit you. You know, the person who prays never gets depressed or suffers of any uh, psychological disease or feels lonely because he is in the company of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is always connected and that's why it's called salah, salah. And in the long hadith, we don't have time to quote the whole hadith, that the more you offer these nawafil, the more Allah brings you close to him until he loves you. May Allah love all of us. Okay, Sister Fatima from the KSA, with regards to the jewelry that she had for a year and she is prepared to give it as a gift to a new bride. Uh, but she kept it for a year. Here is a point. Is this bride your daughter, your sister, you know? 
So this money was yours. The gold was yours. Then it is zakatable. You kept it to give it to somebody else. A year passed, an annual year passed, then you must pay zakat on it because it's in your position. But somebody kept this amana with you, you have nothing to do with the zakat. The person who actually owns it is responsible for its zakat. Um, Naam, with regards to Sister Hamna's question about giving zakat to uh, an employee or a worker who receives a regular salary, you know, in most of our countries, people who do work, particularly for the government, and they're clean, they're dry, they don't take uh, bribes, you know? Only Allah knows how do they survive. Only Allah knows how do they go back and forth to their work, to their job, and they send their kids to the school and put food on the table. Only Allah knows, subhanAllah. So are they eligible for zakah? He could be a manager, a principal of a school, and more eligible than a beggar. Because he's clean, and he's faqir. لا يسألون الناس الحافة. They don't ask from people. يعني they are in desperate need, but they are very shy to ask. They have honor. They have عزّة. They don't ask. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala pointed out to the Quran to the rich that they should pay attention to such people and extend their help to them without waiting for them to ask. Why? Because they are dignified, they are honorable people. So if you know any of them who is working, it doesn't matter what is his caliber, what is his job, what is his uh, uh, position in, in the company or in the government, but we know that this man breaks even. He doesn't have any saving. His wife was sick and, she, and he couldn't buy her medicine. Or family members say that this man is living hand to mouth, then they are eligible for your zakah. إِنَّمَا الصَّدَقَاتُ لِلْفُقَرَاءِ وَالْمَسَاكِينَ Go back, review ayah number 60 of Surah At-Tawbah. By that, brothers and sisters, we come to the end of today's episode of Ask Huda. Until tomorrow, which is going to be the 10th day, the end of the first one-third of Ramadan, I leave you in the care of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Allah is my heart's speech Your mercy is what I beseech Keep in my heart your remembrance And in your deen allow me to advance Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test